some of you people in some of the booth modules may be... Today, you can find John Hoheisel teaching in his classroom at Valley Center Junior High. But 25 years ago, he was a football player, a middle linebacker, defensive end, and senior co-captain at Wichita State. And 25 years ago today, he and his teammates, coaches, and some fans boarded two planes bound for Logan, Utah, where they hoped to score their first win of the season the next day against Utah State. One of the planes made it, the other did not. After stopping briefly in Denver, the planes took off with a full load of fuel and headed west toward the mountains. They told us that we're going to get a, take a scenic route through the mountains and see some of the sights in the mountains because uh, many of us uh, hadn't been in those mountains of Rockies and, and so uh, that was, you know, great. Uh, but we did not know that the other plane had not had the same flight plan. And for many, that would be the difference between life and death. The plane's course was taking it toward Loveland Pass, 11,992 feet. This film footage from 1970 shows the pilot's fatal mistake. Once he entered the canyon, he was surrounded by mountains. The plane was too heavy to fly over them, and there wasn't enough room to turn around. And the next thing you know, you look out the window, and, and uh, I see the um, uh, airplane wings starting to clip the treetops. And, and at the af after that, when it started clipping the treetops, I um, uh, did what everybody did, did, I guess, put my head down as far as I could get it between my legs. And, and uh, next thing I knew, when I came to, um, there was a, a um, we were on the ground and there was a fire by my head and someone said there's a hole back here to get out. And, and like any good football player, John Hoheisel hit the hole and ran for daylight. He and the other survivors got away from the plane just before it exploded. Down below, a construction crew working on the Eisenhower Tunnel heard the crash and arrived to help. They loaded the injured into a station wagon and drove them to nearby Silver Plume. One of Hoheisel's most vivid memories is of teammate Johnny Taylor, who was burned from head to toe. We had him covered up in the back of the wagon with a blanket, and he was in such pain at that, at that time already. And we get to the, to the uh, doctor's office, so he gets out of the car, then the blanket comes off, and uh, here's people starting to scream, you know, we're, you know, we just need this kid to get in somewhere and, and get him taken care of. Johnny Taylor later died of his injuries, the 31st fatality in perhaps the city's most haunting tragedy. And a quarter century later, John Hoheisel knows it is a fine line indeed between being a name on a wall and remembering those who are. You never know when God will take you or how he will take you. If he wanted me to die in that crash and if he wanted me at that time, then I would have been the person who would have been taken. But it is most apparent that he didn't want me at that time, and so therefore I am here.